Welcome to the Crossboard Interviews, the show where we bring you up close and personal with some of Canada's most exciting and vibrant communities. My name is Christopher Brown, and I'm your host for this exciting journey. Over the course of this series, we'll be sitting down with local elected leaders from communities all across Canada. We will learn about who they are, what drives them, and how they are working to make their communities a better place for everyone who lives there. Now, we believe that the best way to understand a community is to talk to people who actually live in their communities. That's why we are honored to have our guest onto the show today. Please help me welcome to the show, Reeve Grant Borskovich of the RM of Riding Mountain West in the province of Manitoba. Grant, welcome to the show. Well, thank you very much, Chris. So, Grant, let's start with the question I've asked every single municipally elected leader on my show. Where did your sense of duty to serve come from? Uh, my mom, actually. she uh, Actually, I have a brother that's Down syndrome. My mom uh, was a school teacher. She worked really, really hard in uh, trying to incorporate people with uh, special needs into the community, getting them involved in Special Olympics, uh, being a part of the community, and just kind of followed that that role and just kind of seen that uh, there was some older people on council and stuff. And I thought that would be a good place to, to start. So what was it about the municipal draw, the municipal allure of politics? Because you could have chosen provincial, you could have chosen federal, but at the end of the day in 2018, you chose municipally. What was it about the municipal realm? Um, You know, it's, it's local, your ground, your boots on the ground you're you're helping the people that are your neighbors and sometimes yeah you have some conflicts and some some uh, people that are mad at you but you're helping your community grow and the people in there and that's that's why i chose uh, to run municipally during that first election because i want to go back to 2018 because that's as far as back as i can find that you put your name oh. forward on oh can you hear me okay yeah yeah, so actually it wasn't 2018, it was uh, actually 2000, 2013, I ran uh, a fella uh, from the RM of Silver Creek, retired, and I took his two-year stint, and then the amalgamation happened in Manitoba, and I ran in 2014 as a councillor, and then in 2018 I ran as the Reeve of Riding Mountain West. Okay, so thank you for the clarification there. Probably why I couldn't find a lot of information, but now that I have the clarification, that's good. I want to start, let's go back to 2013 then. What was okay. it about that election, that 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 time, that you as a, just a private individual finally said, enough is enough, it's time to put up or shut up, and let's get on municipal council? Was there a burning issue in the community? Did you have people coming to you and saying, Grant, you need to run? What was it about that election that you decided finally, now is the time for me to get involved? Um, well, before that, we had had some... Uh, some issues in our in our municipality with uh, the introduction of hog barns in our area. And what had happened was uh, a, a lo local landowner decided to build a, a massive hog barn. Some people were very upset. Um, I looked at it more as, is this an opportunity for RM or is this a problem? Um, and then when the fellow retired, he was in his seventies. He he had just had enough. He came to me and he said, "You know, I think you I think you'd do really really well at this, and this would be a good stepping stone for you." So I thought about it, and I ran, and yeah, I've kind of been there ever since. So, was it a contested election, or was there an acclamation? No, nope, it was contested. There was two of us running, and I I beat the guy. I, I believe it was like thirteen to six. Not very many people came out to vote, but. Uh, yeah, I, I got in and it's kind of been the way it's been ever since. So I want to talk about that uh, election a little bit more in depth here, because I I always find it fascinating to hear from politicians like yourself, from candidates like yourself. What was the pressing issue that you heard when you were talking to your neighbors, talking to the people you wanted to vote, to vote for you? Was it more micro issues or was it more macro issues you talk about that hog the hog barn issue but was that the most pressing issue were there more macro issues like education healthcare, or was it more of these micro local issues that you were seeing 
uh, the micro ones. You know, they want their roads graded. They want them graveled. They want them snow cleared, that kind of stuff. We, we were a small RM when there was, you know, 500 people in the old RM of Silver Creek. Um, so, you know, you kind of know everybody and that kind of stuff. And I was just happy that people voted for me. So the moment after you get elected, the real work begins. The actual day-to-day -day governance, the day-to-day -day operations, the not the operations because you're not in the operation side of governance, but the day-to-day -day governance uh starts for you. How much of a responsibility and duty do you put on yourself every time you go into that council chambers to make sure you're informed on the issues that are presented in front of you, but also informed on what the residents want? Because you're there to represent the people who voted for you and the people who haven't, and you have to make the best decision for the entire RM. So each time you go into that council chambers, how much responsibility do you put on yourself to make sure you're doing it correctly, but you're informed on how you're going to be voting when you get into that council chambers? Um, well, you, you're supposed to take 100% responsibility for your actions, right? And sometimes people forget the reason they're there some people run because they think that they can build themselves a road they can do whatever they want and that's not how our municipality works and if you've researched our municipality in between 14 2014 and 18 there was lots of problems and i'm not blaming it on on individuals um even though i'd like to sometimes but <laughs> you know amalgamation amalgamation happened and there was a bunch of things going on in our office and stuff and it just just kind of got away so we were in the paper for because some of our counselors and elected officials had done some things that were absolutely wrong they weren't bringing it to the table they were doing side projects for themselves and the ratepayers got mad and there was a big blow up so the way we run our municipality today everything comes to the table and if we don't know the answer to something, we table it, we take our time, try and make the best decisions possible. But at the end of the day, not everybody is happy. You know, you can you can please 80% of the people and 20% will be mad or 20% will be happy and 80% will be mad. But at the end of the day, we just got to remember who we're doing this for. We're not doing it for ourselves. We're doing it for the people of Riding Mountain West. And right now we have a really, really good council that takes that into into account and if we can have people like that run our province and our country we'd be way better off chris i think so a amen to that sir amen to that but i want to i want to jump onto something that you just said there um you're not going to please everyone with every decision you make I, everyone should know that by now who's ever gotten into elected office but how do you do it because you while you don't want to anger people with the decisions you make, you have to make the tough choices. And there's some tough choices that may upset eight or 20% of the population. Heck, it might upset 80% of the population, but you have to be there to make the best decisions for your community of the RM. How do you see yourself as Reeve? And even when you were a counselor, balancing the needs of the individual with the needs of the community to grow it and move it forward? So the one thing that we do here is we have an open room. Like if you want to come as an individual rate payer and have a conversation with me or any of our counselors or at council time meetings, we will set up a meeting or you can, you can come to one of our council meetings. We try and talk through the issues, but at some points in time, Chris, people are just beating a dead horse. Like they're always coming with the same problem that you've, you've tried to correct. You've tried to, to help with, and they just won't let it go. And at some points in time, you just got to tell them, like, we've gone through this, we've discussed it. The worst thing that you can do, and I and I know this happens in other municipalities, and I know it happens provincially and federally, is not letting your ratepayers know what's going on. And, you know, we have Facebook, we have our website, you can come to any of our meetings. You know, at our budget meeting a month ago, we had two people show up. You know, we're not that big of an RM, but we still have a $6 million budget, two people show up. But if somebody doesn't feel comfortable coming, you know, you can come to the office and talk to us, talk to our CAO. That's how we try and try and run our RM. 
communications is a key part to a lot of local elected leaders, yours in particular, as you just said, two people attending a budget meeting. I'm actually shocked that two people actually showed up, to be honest, because from what I hear, that's a large turnout for a budget meeting for some municipalities across Canada. You can communicate till you're blue in the face, though. People will always say, I didn't hear about it. I didn't know about it. I didn't get it. How do you battle back against the apathy nature that municipal politics has? Because provincial, federal ap uh, apathy is not there. People are engaged provincially. Pro people are engaged federally. But when it comes to municipal, which is honestly the closest government to the people, people just don't seem to care. Do you find that in the RM of Riding Mountain West? We, we find people don't care if everything is running well. If they think <laughs> everything is running well, they don't care. But as soon as you have that one topic that, um, you know, is going to be contentious, then all of a sudden people are phoning and saying, well, I didn't know about this. But we've had it advertised in a local paper. We've had it advertised on Facebook, on, on our website. And, you know, I go a lot of places. Our other counselors go a lot of places. I'm hope, hoping they're talking about that. And that's just, you know, the best we can do, Chris, you know, you, you can't phone everybody and say this is going on and, and text everybody. We try our best, but, you know, we're, we're just hoping people show up. Right. So how much does respect come into play as well? Because you talk about the beating the dead horse aspect, because people will come to you with their issues and they want their issues addressed. But, you know, some issues can't be addressed, whether it be a provincial issue, a federal issue. Heck, financially, you can't please 100 percent of the people every budget but you have to give them respect to listen to their thoughts even if you've heard it 12 times how much does respect come into play in a position like reeve in your community well our council and our ratepayers know that i don't put up with much crap chris <laughs> and I'm not saying that in in a bad way i'm saying like if we go to a meeting i always announce you know who's at the meeting what we're discussing if you're going to be rude or ignorant or whatever, you're going to, we're going to ask you to leave the meeting. We're not going to ask you to, you know, continue on with your rant so other people can sit there and roll their eyes and stuff. But I will give people, even if they're a little, little excited or a little um, revved up about the situation, to, to speak their points and then we can discuss it. And sometimes they're, they're yelling at an RM about a provincial issue. And the provincial issue has to be taken to your MLA and be asked. But sometimes people will talk in the coffee shop more than they'll come to the RM office and get the proper information and, and say, you know, this is more of a provincial or federal issue than it is an RM issue. The biggest thing that we're finding is there's so much downloading from the provincial government here in Manitoba onto municipalities that people don't understand you know, the province makes these rules, then they download it to the municipality, and then we're trying to implement something that should be implemented actually by the provincial government. So they're getting mad at us. So we have to turn around and say, look, at this is all the stuff that's been brought down by the province, and now we have to deal with this. And once, you know, if you can talk to people rationally and give them the proper information and they can go home and digest it, a lot of people will come back and say, geez, I didn't know about this. You know, you guys are doing a good job. Or did you think about this? And then we can go back to our meeting and say, you know, these people brought up these points. Maybe we got to relook at this situation. But getting back, it's communication. And, and when people are mad, you know, people are mad for a reason, but they will calm down and they will eventually talk to you in a, in a decent matter is what we found. How do how do you how do you deal with uh, downloading? Because you're not the only province and the only RM across this country who's dealing with downloading issues, particularly in this tough financial time. Cost of biz doing business is going up. Cost of inflation is going up. Um, but you still have to provide the services and the governance that people need in your community, whether it be snow clearing, whether it be a uh, landfill operation, whether it be water issues, how do you see yourself navigating the financial trickery? That is the downloading aspect, but the inflation aspect as well in your community. So we, um, we download everything to our website or Facebook. So if we're petitioning the government for, you know, an increase in, um, mines and mineral rights because we have lots of gravel pits here we let people know about that um we also 
you know, inform people that the Manitoba government has um, downloaded the engineering costs for the garbage dumps to to build a new pit or dig a new pit for our garbage dumps. Everything has to be engineered now. So we've we've done a really, really good job of breaking that out in our budgets and informing people on Facebook and websites that this is what's happening. And then people will buy into it a little bit more. But if you if you hide it, lots of, I don't know, understand why lots of councils want to hide everything from their ratepayers and then have this big fight about stuff. I I don't get it. If you give them the information and they can sort through it and research it themselves a little bit, they'll bring you some good ideas. But when you're hiding stuff and not telling them what's going on, then they get mad that you know your your council's crooked and your this is going on. And you know just some people need a kick in the bum when it comes to that stuff sometimes so i will i will say that before every interview i go on uh rms or counties or municipalities website and you are engaging you are educating and you are informing your residents on your website i've never seen a more up-to-date website than I, i saw with the rms so i give credit to yourself your administration for keeping that thing informed and engaged with uh, what's going on in your community. I think it was the most informative website I've ever been to over the last three months that I've been doing this. So congratulations, man. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very much. So, um, But on the flip side of that, and this is the part where I always find it because I have a background in communications in municipalities. You can put all the information on your website. You can inform all your residents through your website, through social media, but you can't lead a horse to water and let ask it to drink. You kind of are hoping you can put all the information out, but if people don't want to look for it, they won't. How do you see that? Because engagement is one thing. Information is another thing. Doing both at the same time is a completely unique entity. It's like a freaking unicorn sometimes trying to get people to actually get informed about the issues without being inundated by the misinformation that we are seeing through social media. Well, the one nice thing about being in a smaller municipality is if you tell the right old lady, everybody (laughs) knows after that something is going on because she'll either have it on Facebook or she'll be phoning phoning them for for coffee you know that's that's the way it is but um you know it's it's you're absolutely right you try and put out all this information and if people aren't looking for it or it doesn't involve their everyday life they really don't care Chris they they care about their roads being graded being graveled snow being cleared and after every snowstorm everybody in our municipality has a doctor's appointment at 10 o'clock. And I said, well, we only have five doctors in the area. So 1500 people cannot have a doctor's appointment all at 10 o'clock. So, you know, it's one of those things, but um, you know, you try and you try and you try and you put out the information and you hope people are, are are grabbing it and gauging it. And if they have a problem with it, coming and and talking to us and, you know, it's really, really difficult. So. So before we turn to our next segment, and that's about the RM as a whole, I want to ask this question because in Manitoba, Ontario, BC, New Brunswick, we've seen a large turnover of local elected leaders. And whether that be Reeves, uh, mayors, councillors, all new to the position, you've been in elected office for some time now. What advice would you give to a newly elected councillor or newly elected mayor or Reeve who is just in their first term and trying to navigate the way that local government works either in the province of Manitoba or even across Canada that you wish you would have had in your first few years as an elected official? Well, I tell everybody this, Chris, whether you're new or have some experience, at the end of the day when we go home, We want to be able to, first of all, go out for, you know, for supper or drink as a council together. We want to leave the council stuff at the table. But if you're going into council stuff and you want to run for your for your town or or your RM, remember, you're there for the people. You're not there for yourself. You're not there to build a road for yourself or do your own little project. And there's a lot going on. There's a lot of committees. There's a lot of things that that people that have never ran for council don't even know that we do. And until you're involved in it, you get to see that. But at the end of the day, when you leave, you know, being a counselor or an elected official, I hope everybody can say, you know, I did my best. I tried to move my RM forward. 
And if you can take that with you, then you've, you've done as good a job as you can do. And, and I, you know, our council, like I said, is, is good. We're trying to move our RM forward. And, you know, that's, that's kind of the little motto that we live by at the end of the day, we should, we should be happy. So. I always tell people if you, as particularly in smaller rural areas, don't expect a full a part-time job being a counselor because it is a full-time job with part-time pay half the time because you are constantly uh reeve no matter where you are. <laughs> exactly. And the other part is, Chris, and I, you've probably heard this from other people, the word counselor means that you got to deal with all their family problems, all their RM problems, their dog problems, their cat problems. And it's like, you know, you listen and you listen and then you try and help if that's the type of person you are. And, but it's, uh, and you learn that neighbors fight. Neighbors fight about water. They fight about animals. They fight about whatever personal stuff is going on. And it's, you don't realize how many screwed up neighbors there are. So I appreciate it's it's challenging. I, I want to turn because I am cautious of time here, Reeve, to the second segment. And before I start this segment, I want to preface this by saying this is a conversation between the Reeve and myself. This is not a motion of counsel. This is not an opinion of counsel. This is his opinion and only his opinion. The governance side comes later when he's actually in a council meeting. So, Reeve, in your opinion, what is the biggest issue facing the RM of Riding Mountain West today as of recording? The biggest or, issue? Or issues. That's kind of a hard question, Chris, because we live in, we live in a community that's um, – you know, based on a lot of agriculture, we have a lot of tourism. We don't have a lot of commercial um, assessment. Farms are getting bigger. There's less and less people. There's less and less people to be on committees that affect your community. Um, the people that are a part of stuff have been a part of a lot of stuff. It seems like the younger generation doesn't care in a in a sense of of having the boards or, or the history you know there's there's numerous ones the biggest ones though would be i want to i want to ask that but i want to follow up on that that statement you just made there because this is this gets to the crux of why i'm doing this show people are tuning out especially in rural communities we are seeing a larger drive to more urban centers but I always say rural matters. There are municipalities who are the backbone of our community, of our provinces, whether it be agriculture, whether it be tourism, whether it be the natural resource sector, our rural communities are the backbone of our communities, of our provinces. How do you see yourself as Reeve and the role of the RM in helping drive the resource sector and the agriculture sector forward while trying to attract new people and retaining the people that you currently have in your community, in your community? Well, we're, we're kind of fortunate because we have uh, two, um, two potash mines close to the Manitoba border. One's at Brokenville, Saskatchewan, one's at Esther Hazy. So there's lots of people in, in the communities that drive to work there every day, good paying jobs. They want to live in smaller communities, but they don't want to take the time to sit on boards or, or, you know, if, if their kids are playing baseball, they're, they're invested in baseball. If their kids are playing hockey, they're invested in that. Do they care about water stewardship or water um, district boards? No, they, they don't care about that. And it's hard to find people to sit on those boards. Where we have, um, you know, uh, another potash mine that's coming up and it's kind of started. It's, um, it's called Padcom at Russell. That's our neighboring municipality. So, you know, trying to keep people in our smaller towns is good. But what we're finding right now is there's lots of people that want to move out of, you know, say Calgary or Winnipeg and come to smaller towns because they can't afford the housing that's going on in those big cities. So we have lots for sale that are cheaper, but, you know, it still costs two hundred, two hundred fifty thousand dollars $250,000 to build a house. And 
they're finding that they can work remotely from home, but our internet sometimes really, really sucks. So our municipality is joining um, Park West Fiber Co-op, and it's a it's a internet based co-op that's put to all the Park West uh, school divisions. So we're joining that, and it's I'm not a techie guy, but that'll help bring. Uh, better internet to our area so that people can do their home-based business and maybe do hybrid work and stuff. Um, That's one of the things that's going on in our municipality. But the things that we hear the most are more federal and provincial matters other than, like I said, they want their roads cleared, graveled, snow cleared, you know, maybe fix the, the boat docks at Lake Prairie. But, you know, they're, they're grumbling to us about the taxes they're paying both provincially and federally. And, you know, we don't have a say in that. All we can do is the, is the municipal stuff. But I think the MLAs and the MPs of, of Canada need to get out and really listen to what the, the root of the matters are in Canada. And I don't think they're doing that as much as them coming to us as municipal councillors and saying, can you relay this message to, to our MLA or to our MP? You know, that's what we're finding. Okay, I'm going to challenge you a little bit here on that on that statement, yep. because if a resident comes to you and talks to you about their issue, whether it be provincial or whether it be federal, they don't care. And I say they don't care as in they don't they don't want to go talk to their MLA or MP because they may not live in their community. They not may not be there yep. in their community 24 seven. You as mayor are. You as Reeve yep. uh, have been elected to represent the community. So when they come yep. talk to you, they don't want to get the brush off. They don't want to get the brush off to say it's a federal issue. It's a provincial issue. You are elected to help them advocate for their issue. How do you do that? Because I can imagine you as Reeve understand the different levels of government and what government does what and what government has what policies. But the average citizen, and I'm not trying to paint a broad stroke here, but I am going to, doesn't know that. And they don't care because they want their issue fixed by their local elected leader. So you, as Reeve, have to advocate on many different issues, education, taxes, health care, whatever. It must be so, challenging to do that. It is. Uh, <laughs> the one thing that we doing here is we invite our MLA to come to uh, and it doesn't have to be a council meeting Chris it can just be a meeting and sit down and we have a list of issues that we go through and you know he can tell us whether he can take this to this minister or write a letter you know all that kind of stuff we do the same thing with uh, Dan Mazer who's our MP for for the PC party for the federal government and we ask our our ratepayers, you can come in and sit sit in on these meetings, so you can hear it straight from them. We'll bring up your topics for you, and we'll spend the the half a day or or whatever amount of time it takes. So I think people enjoy that, but sometimes they know. Sometimes we know that all they're doing is venting to somebody that'll listen, because sometimes their MLA, you know, they're busy too with their lives and doing whatever, and same with their MPs. Sometimes they know we know that they're just like I said, venting, we will try and help, but also having that conversation, we can't change the federal tax bracket. You know, we, we can go to meetings and we can lobby our AMM group that lobbies the Manitoba government for stuff. And just telling them all that stuff and showing them what we're doing is a, is a big benefit to, to most people anyways. I'm going to ask a very loaded question here, and I do apologize for putting you on the spot, but do you feel like your issues are being heard at the federal and provincial level? When you're talking to your MLA, your MP, while the MP in your area is from the opposition side and the government is liberal, uh, I'm assuming it, provincially it's in the government side. Uh, please correct me if I'm wrong there. Um, but do you feel like when you talk to your MP, your uh, MLA, you're being heard and your issues are being addressed, whether it be a federal level or a provincial level? Uh, on the federal level, n- not as much. You know, we we bring up stuff to them, and they try and help. Um, provincially, I would say that our MLA Rick Wochuk has done really, really well for us. The big benefit that we've seen in the last two years is um, like our CAO Jocelyn. There, you know her. She has just been a world of difference. She's 
she knows how government works. You know, we never sent Christmas cards to MLAs before, Chris. We never did that. So we do that. Now we go to an AMM convention and the leader of the opposition, Wab Canoe, is coming up to us, to Jocelyn and I and saying, you know, we just got your Christmas card. Thank you very much. You know, they know who you are. And if you put yourself out there instead of just being, well, we're a little closed community. We want to do everything ourselves. You know, we don't need need help from anybody. You're not going to get very far in life. And I would just like to say that our, our PC party here, whether you like them or not, they've done a lot of good things, but their communication to the province hasn't been very well. <clears throat> you know, they, they don't know how to communicate very well. So then our ratepayers are coming to us saying, well, do you know this is happening? Or do you know this is happening? Yeah, we know it's happening. It's not really our job to communicate that to you, but, you know, we will we will try, right? So, I want to talk about the individual resident now. And I asked this, I asked a similar question earlier on, but I want to go into the nitty gritty here. You you talked about what you believe is the biggest issue issues or concerns that are facing the RM today. If I go talk to 10, 15, 20 people in your community, they're going to tell me their issues. And I, if I ask them what their biggest issue in their community is, how do you as Reeve balance the individual needs with the residents? Because Everyone has a pothole. Everyone knows where a pothole is on a road and they want their potholes fixed. You as the RM have a budget and you can't run deficits. You have to pick the winners and losers at the end of the day of whose pothole is going to be fixed or whose issue is going to be fixed. And sometimes people come to you and say, we need a big swimming pool in our area. We need better services on this street. How do you manage the individual needs as an RM and what policies do you have in place to make sure that everyone is a being heard, but everyone's issues feel like they're getting fixed. So what we do in our municipality is if you have an issue, you need to write it down on a piece of paper and send it to the office. This way I'm not advocating on behalf of you all the time, right? If this issue is really, really important to you, write it down, explain it to us, and we'll discuss it in a, in a meeting. Um, you know, if the cat's in the tree, you know, we'll help you get the cat down. You know, if there's a pothole, Chris, nine times out of 10, we're going to fix it. Sometimes people don't understand the process. Like last year we had, uh, because of the late spring and the flood and stuff, we had some DFA, which is disaster financial assistance uh, programs. And the one guy was complaining to us. We we helped him. We built him a road the back way out of his property. He's a farmer. And we told him, we have this $100,000 project and the province of Manitoba will give us a bunch of money, but we need the engineers to come out and assess it and tell us what to do before we can start the project. You know, and he was he was pretty irate and pretty mad, but we worked through the, the situation with him and he's, and he's okay with that. But if you, if you brush him off and just say, Oh, well, he doesn't matter and he doesn't care, then that's where they're going to get mad. And they're going to put it on Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff. <clears throat> Number one thing back to the beginning communication, you know, and letting people be heard, come to our meetings, tell us what the problem is and give us a solution. Don't just come with a problem, but what do you see as a solution so that you can help us better make decisions also, right? Are people willing I, to give their solutions? A lot of people are, but sometimes, sometimes there's a lot of councils that think they know the right way, no matter what. And, yeah. you know, we have a big RM land, land wise, Chris, and we don't know where all the little tributaries run and the little creeks and stuff and why things were done that way. And going back and talking to people, it's it's almost like being an, a private investigator sometimes. You got to not only hear your side of the story, you got to hear the neighbor's side of the story to make sure you don't piss someone else off somewhere, right? So that's that's what we find. So um, just just communication is the, is the biggest thing. You talk about the, we, we talked about apathy at the beginning of the show, but you said you get people to write in their concerns to council. So that way you can look at it as a council. Um, when people are engaged, they will write in. I'm assuming there's probably some stacks of papers that you have as a council or a short stack of papers that you have to go through on a regular basis to make sure people's issues are not just read and discussed, but actually addressed, right? Because you as council have to take the issue and then move it forward and make sure it gets done. So that way they don't just feel like they're getting brushed off. Yep. The, the other thing though, 
uh, Chris, is just because it's on a piece of paper, people will lie to you. You know, we had, we had guys. You stop the presses here. Come on, Marie. What are you talking about? People lie. We had, a, we had a, a couple come to us and say they want to buy some lots in a little town. And we said, you know, that would be awesome. You're going to put a new house and a new shop there. Yep. And our our fault was not asking them what new was. Because new to them was a 1960 Bose trailer that wasn't a CSA approved that looked like it should be at the garbage dump. And they're saying, well, it is new. It's new to us. Well, we were thinking you know, newer, right? You know, um, so sometimes we, we forget also to ask the proper question sometimes, and then people get mad because, you know, you're not letting us do what we want to do. So, so, uh, yeah, it's, it's all fun and games sometimes. So <clears throat> I want to turn to my last segment before I, I wrap up here. And it's one thing that you mentioned a little bit earlier on, but I want to dive into a little bit deeper because I like it. I'm hoping you as well. Tourism. As someone who has started this show, I have said, if you come on the show, I will be coming out to your community to spend my economic dollars in your community. So as a tourist, as I have listeners from across Canada and around the world, what are some of the tourist spots in the RM of riding Mountain West that people should stop in and see? Well, uh, this is in no way in, in in an order because these are all very important things to our municipality. But uh, if you've never been to Lake of the Prairies, you should go there. It's the fourth fourth best walleye fishing in all of Manitoba. Um, beautiful lake, uh, Mississippi Park, uh, Provincial Park um, joins that. So there's a place to to camp. There's some yurts there to to rent and stuff. Um, along that lake, there's also developments with some uh, Airbnbs and stuff you can rent. The other thing right beside Lake of the Prairies is we um, we have in our municipality Mississippi Ski Hill, one of the nicest ski hills uh, all across Canada, I'd like to say, for being in the prairies where it's flat. It's really, really beautiful. They do a very, very good job of marketing that and, and being top-notch uh, tourism destination. We also have Riding Mountain National Park beside us, which there's some walking tours. Um, but we also have a lot of history. Um, if you come to the little town of Inglis, there's, there's f- uh, five wooden elevators there that are all redone. Um, it's You've probably seen pictures of it. The only place, I believe, in Canada that has something like that. Um, we also have in Angusville... Um, some old uh, um, heritage museums dating back to the Ukrainian settlers. Um, and, you know, we just have some some little neat home-based businesses that if you're looking in the right place, will give you a good meal, some good cakes, some good food. And you know what? We just have really, 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 really nice people here that would help you if you have a flat tire they're going to stop and they're going to help you they're not going to let you sit on the side of the road and and you give them the finger as you say why didn't you stop to help me kind of a deal so so in a nutshell our our rm you know is small but it's beautiful the people here are great and we have a lot of little attractions that are pretty pretty important to us so where do you go? Where do you go after a stressful day of council or a long day of meetings? Is there a, a hill? Is there a park? Is there a watering hole that you go to just decompress and get back to normal? Well, I don't drink. Um, <laughs> so so I don't... Coffee drink. shop? <laughs> uh, you know what? I At the end of the day, after dealing with people all the time, Chris, I... I just like to go uh, to my tractor, but what I really like to do, and this sounds really, really stupid, is I could walk some barbed wire fence and just go check on my cows and have a conversation with them because they don't talk back. Does that make sense? So, so, uh, but you that know, that makes perfect sense. You no, know, that's so. If I see a, if I'm traveling down the number one highway and I see you out talking to some cows, I'll say, I know that guy. <laughs> He's out talking to some cows now. So. <laughs> um, I want to end on this question and this is the million dollar question and you kind of alluded to it in your last statement but I want to go into a little bit deeper and take as long as you want to answer this or as short as time as you want to answer this in your opinion what makes the RM of Riding Mountain West such a unique place to live to work 
and to raise a family? One, we're, we're small enough that everybody knows you. Um, we're also small enough that everybody will come and help you if you're in trouble. If your house burns down, there will always be somebody to give you a house. We'll, we'll try and help you rebuild. We have good community members that look after um, the rinks, the community halls, always make you feel, feel welcome. We live in a good place. We're two hours from Brandon, Manitoba, an hour from Yorkton, hour and a half from Dauphin. You can drive there to get your Walmart. Your, you know, Russell has Tim Hortons, Subway, that kind of stuff if you're into that. But at the end of the day, the people in this community make it a really, really good place to live. And we care about each other. And if anybody had to, if anybody is looking for a place to live and move, we got outdoor stuff. We got indoor stuff in the area. And I just, I wouldn't want to live anywhere else, Chris. So, Reeve, I want to thank you so much for sitting down and taking time out of your busy day and doing this. Um, I appreciate all that you do. And I say this with all sincerity. We need more people like you at the council tables because it seems like you have a passion for municipal government, but you are willing to call a spade a spade sometimes. So thank you so much for doing this and thank you so much for serving your community. It's greatly appreciated. Well, thank you very much. Thanks for, for allowing me to come on. And when you come this way, give me a call and we'll go somewhere. We certainly will. So with that, this has been the cross border interviews with Chris Brown. Have yourself an excellent day. And remember everyone just keep talking.